the diesel engine screams to life across snow-covered testing grounds. 68 tons of American steel and composite armor pivot on adaptive tracks, turret rotating with hydraulic precision toward a threat that exists only in simulation. Inside, the crew compartment is empty, replaced by touchscreens, displaying battlefield data from satellites, drones, and ground sensors feeding AI-powered targeting algorithms. The main gun, a hypervelocity, 130mm cannon tracks an imaginary target at 4,000 meters. Fire control calculates wind, temperature, barrel wear, target velocity in microseconds. The autoloader cycles, one round, then another, six rounds per minute sustained, each projectile traveling at velocities that turn reactive armor into shrapnel before it can detonate. This isn't the Abrams your grandfather drove into Baghdad. This is the M1E3, and it just made every tank Russia parades through Red Square look like museum pieces. 1,400 miles east, outside Moscow, another engine roars. The T-14 Armata rolls across Alabino proving grounds, its unmanned turret bristling with sensors and composite armor panels. Russian defense officials call it revolutionary, the first true third-generation main battle tank. Western analysts call it vaporware. 20 prototypes built, zero combat deployments, industrial production stalled since 2021. But on paper, it's terrifying. The question burning through Pentagon war rooms isn't which tank wins on spec sheets. It's whether America's industrial base can outbuild, out-innovate, and out-sustain Russia's military-industrial complex when the shooting starts. Because in armored warfare, the tank that matters isn't the one with the best armor. It's the one that shows up in decisive numbers when and where it's needed. 847 hours, General Dynamics Land Systems, Sterling Heights, Michigan. October 2025, this is ground zero for the most expensive tank modernization in US Army history. $17 billion across eight years, transforming the M1A2 Abrams into the M1E3, a platform designed not just to kill enemy armor, but to orchestrate combined arms warfare across domains humans can barely process. The strategic stakes are existential. Russia fields 14,000 tanks, legacy Soviet equipment refreshed with modern fire control and reactive armor. China operates over 5,000 main battle tanks with industrial capacity to surge production during conflict. America's active inventory, approximately 2,400 M1 variants, many approaching 40 years of service. The math is brutal. In a peer conflict, American armor gets outnumbered six to one before accounting for battlefield attrition. The M1E3 doesn't solve numerical disadvantage through quantity. It solves it through lethality multiplication. Each tank becomes a node in a networked kill web, sharing targeting data with aircraft, artillery, infantry fighting vehicles, and autonomous ground robots. The XM360 lightweight 130 mm gunfires, advanced multi-purpose rounds penetrating armor at ranges exceeding 5,000 meters, while the Trophy Active Protection System defeats incoming missiles before they reach the hull. Compare that to Russia's T-14 Armata, mounting the two A82-1M 125mm smoothbore. Impressive on paper until you realize the Armata's claimed invincibility rests on Afghanit active protection that's never been combat tested, an unmanned turret requiring data links vulnerable to electronic warfare and a production rate measured in handfuls per year rather than industrial scale. The T-14 costs approximately $8 million per unit, assuming production ever scales beyond prototypes. The M1E3 upgrade costs roughly $4 million per tank, leveraging existing hulls and proven systems while adding revolutionary capabilities. The development story begins in 2017 when army strategists confronted uncomfortable realities from Syria and Ukraine. Russian tanks equipped with Contact 5 explosive reactive armor were shrugging off older American munitions. Cornet anti-tank missiles costing $25,000 were mission-killing Abrams worth $9 million. The army needed survivability, lethality, and situational awareness upgrades that couldn't wait for some future clean sheet design two decades away. General Dynamics proposed the M1E3 as rapid evolution retaining the proven turbine engine and basic hull while revolutionizing everything else. 
Trophy APS from Israel's Rafael became standard, providing 360-degree protection against missiles and RPGs. The XM360 gun, derived from Rheinmetall technology, delivered 50% greater penetration than legacy 120mm cannons. Most critically, the integrated battle command system fused sensors from across the formation into a common operational picture, updated in real time. Testing at Yuma Proving Ground validated capabilities that sound like science fiction. The M1E3 detected and engaged targets through smoke, dust, and electromagnetic jamming that blinded older systems. Trophy intercepted simultaneous missile attacks from multiple vectors, destroying threats the crew never visually acquired. The AI-assisted fire control achieved first-round hits at maximum range against maneuvering targets, something human gunners accomplish maybe 60% of the time under ideal conditions. By 2024, the 1st Regiment received M1E3S. By 2027, three armoured brigades will field the upgrade. The industrial rhythm, 40 tanks per month from Stirling Heights, with surge capacity reaching 75 if wartime demands it. Picture the engagement unfolding across Eastern Europe's Suwalki Gap, 60 kilometers of Polish-Lithuanian border terrain that NATO must hold or lose the Baltics forever. A Russian mechanized brigade advances through morning fog, spearheaded by T-90M ProRiv tanks, mounting relict reactive armor and 125 mm guns. Behind them, T-14 Armatas the handful actually operational provide fire support while staying beyond direct contact. Russian doctrine emphasizes mass and momentum, overwhelming defenses through sheer numbers before NATO reinforcements arrive. What they don't see are four M1E3s positioned in defilade on a ridgeline seven kilometers distant, hull down behind terrain that hides everything but sensors and gun tubes. The tank's driver vision enhancers penetrate fog using thermal imaging. Battle management systems track 63 enemy vehicles simultaneously, prioritizing threats based on armor type, range, and tactical significance. The lead M1E3 commander doesn't issue fire commands. He confirms target packages, AI systems already assembled, distributed across the four tank platoon via encrypted data links immune to Russian jamming. At 0614 hours, the M1E3S open fire in coordinated salvo. XM360 guns hurl advanced multi-purpose rounds downrange at 1800 meters per second, hypervelocity penetrators that impact Russian armor before defenders comprehend they're under attack. The first T90M explodes as the penetrator punches through relict tiles, fuel tanks, and ammunition storage in microseconds. Secondary detonations ripple through the formation. The second M1E3 engages a T14 Armata, attempting evasive maneuvers. The round impacts the turret ring where armor is thinnest, catastrophic kill. Russian tankers scramble to return fire, but their mechanically scanned sights are still searching empty ridgelines. Autoloaders cycle, six rounds per minute from each M1E3. 24 precision kills in four minutes. Russian advance momentum shatters, but the Russians adapt. Artillery fire missions saturate the ridgeline with 152 mm shells. Smoke rounds create obscurance. Attack helicopters vector toward the American position. This is where M1E3's networked architecture becomes decisive. Counter-battery radar tracks incoming artillery, transmits coordinates to HIMARS launches 30 km rear. Return fire silences Russian guns within six minutes. The M1E3S receive early warning of helicopter approach from Patriot batteries, target data flowing through IBCS networks. The tanks pivot, launching FIM-92 Stinger missiles from vehicle-mounted launchers, destroying two MI-28 gunships before they reach firing positions. Then the real threat materializes Russian Cornet teams infiltrated through tree lines, wire-guided missiles launching from concealed positions at two kilometers. This is the nightmare scenario that killed American tanks in Iraq. Except now Trophy APS detects missile launches in milliseconds. Radar panels lock onto incoming threats. Counter projectiles fire three explosions rippling across the defensive perimeter. All three Cornets destroyed mid-flight. The M1E3S don't even displace. 
They stay in position, continuing to maul the Russian advance while automated defenses handle threats that would have forced retreat just five years earlier. The aftermath resonates beyond tactical victory. Russian commanders realize their armored doctrine, predicated on overwhelming NATO through numerical superiority, just became prohibitively expensive. Every T-90M costs approximately $4.2 million. America demonstrated that four tanks with superior technology defeated a reinforced company while suffering zero losses. The force exchange ratio isn't sustainable for armies relying on quantity to offset quality. Behind every M1E3 rolling off Sterling Heights assembly lines stand 6,800 American workers whose expertise cannot be quickly replicated. Welders join composite armor tiles using techniques perfected over four decades of Abrams production. Electronics technicians install trophy components under Raphael license, calibrating radar arrays to thresholds distinguishing birds from missiles. Software engineers debug AI targeting algorithms, training neural networks on millions of engagement simulations. Former tankers turned instructors teach crews how to fight as sensor platforms rather than just gun trucks. The supply chain extends to Raytheon facilities in Massachusetts producing trophy interceptors, Rheinmetall factories in Germany supplying gun barrels, and hundreds of component manufacturers providing ceramic armor inserts to fiber optic data links. This industrial ecosystem represents decades of accumulated knowledge how to manufacture to mil-spec tolerances, how to integrate complex systems under combat conditions, how to sustain global logistics. Russia's defense industry, hollowed by sanctions and corruption, produces perhaps 20 T-14s annually. American capacity, even without surge mobilization, exceeds that by orders of magnitude. The M1E3 program proves that platform longevity isn't obsolescence, it's opportunity. The basic M1 design dates to the 1970s, but continuous evolution kept it relevant through four decades of technological revolution. Digital fire control replaced analog systems. Composite armor improved protection without weight penalties. Now AI and active protection systems transform the tank from isolated vehicle into networked weapons node. Meanwhile, Russia's T-14, theoretically superior on paper, remains trapped in developmental limbo. Too expensive for mass production, too unproven for combat deployment, too dependent on technologies, sanctions have made increasingly unavailable. So here's the question that matters. If you commanded armored forces facing peer competitors fielding thousands of tanks, would you rather have the latest design with revolutionary but unproven capabilities? or the platform with 40 years of combat validation continuously modernized with technologies that actually work? Let me know in the comments below. This is DIB Dispatch, where billion-dollar projects meet battlefield reality.